this is the way. Hello and welcome back to the Josh Dixon Show. I am Josh Dixon, a uh, freelance filmmaker, business owner, and movie video game enthusiast, and love talking about everything in between. I am Dan Highwind. I am a college English professor, a novelist, and my life revolves around the bodily functions of two small humans. I'm Michael. Uh, just happy to be here and talk to you guys, honestly. Mm. Good to have you. Aww. I'm Trevor. I uh, do software engineering during the day, and I am a video game en enthusiast during the night. All right. Topic of today. Your dream video game. If uh, money was no object, click the easy button and create the video game of your dreams. What would it be? I actually talked about this with Trevor like yesterday, and maybe this is where the, the uh, idea came from. But um, I... Uh, I would love to see a open world RPG around Mandalorians. Um, mainly because what you could do with it is pretty extensive where um, you got numerous customization options with armor, um, color codings. Yep. Um, I mean, I, I, I had a dream about this, which is why I, I text Trevor and was like, dude, this would be an awesome game. Um, you could go on bounty hunts for like big monsters, and then if you if you kill it, you get to put its sigil on like your shoulder pauldron or something. Um, it would be online with other people, so you could like be in the wilderness and kind of um, kind of like Destiny, where you there's a public event that pops up, and there might be like a giant turtle dinosaur thing, you know, from like the last couple episodes of Mandalorian, and it takes like twelve guys to take him out. So like other people would be in the world and we we get a notification to go to the spot and we'd all fight together and take out this turtle thing. Or um, you can customize your ship. Um, bigger ships are slower and not as maneuverable, but you can store more uh, bounties in it to turn into to bounty collectors to get, you know, cash or whatever. Or you could go for a smaller, more agile ship and it's better at fighting, but you can't carry as many bounties. So you wouldn't be able to cash in as well. There's like so many different things you could do with it. Um, Would you have a baby Yoda? No, I don't. Think well, you. okay, but here's the thing. But do you want to sounds... sell co sell copies? Yeah, baby Yoda, <laughs> baby Yoda DLC. Well, here's the thing, because this sounds a good deal like Monster Hunter. I I'm sure like the the gameplay would be different, but like the um, what do you call it? Like the the, the game gameplay loop the game the, the, the loop yeah, yeah the loop uh, absolutely but, the, the, the but that game has the cat people it does and they're so very like you, cute you should have um, like you know you'd need like a little baby alien atmosphere and right? aesthetic change can completely change how a game sells so i would um, love to just run in and haggle with jawas or do that <laughs> I, I, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to even be mandalorian based i've always wanted a good like realistic looking graphics, open world, fly to different planet Star Wars game. And I haven't gotten that yet. I really like the Jedi uh, Souls-like games, Jedi Fallen Order and then the upcoming um, Survivor. But it's still not that. It's Could still... be a bit Mass Effect-y in that maybe, regard. Maybe, yeah. Honestly, uh, Mass, Mass Effect is like, like a space the... opera. I like that, yeah. Honestly, I think the, the Hogwarts legacy, you want that for Star Wars. I like everything yet. about... The... I, I know, but like everything about that is, I think, what you're looking for okay. with, with Star Wars. I love this. The, the, what is like the overview of how does Hogwarts Legacy work? Um, you just it's a it's a massive open world. You have tasks. You're constantly interacting with stuff. You can choose the order in which you do things. So it's um, kind of like it's kind of like an MMORPG. Uh, no, no online component. It is single player oh, okay. only. Oh, interesting. Uh, which it's it's just it's a lot of fun, and you're just constantly doing stuff. Um, it, I don't know how else to describe it, but I think, they, like, as simple as that sounds, they, we've never gotten that for Star Wars. Do you have a pet NPC in the Hogwarts game? You can. You, oh, have, okay. you have, like, you like, you have a like whole, an owl like, or a frog or something like that. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you have, they have this whole, like, um, uh, forbidden beast sub like thing that you can do where you can capture animals and then put them in a safe so they place. Put in a little Fantastic Beast stuff in there, basically. As, yeah. As Did a you just sell me on this game? As a Mandalorian, I want to have a salacious crumb, like those things that are in the trees. On your shoulder, yeah, yeah, and he just got goes a Pikachu type thing. Oh, that'd be so annoying. That would be really fun. And so he John... checks out ladies. <laughs> um, the it's like really not PC in all his comments. <laughs> I'll, I'll, okay, maybe I'll... not. Josh, what sort of um, 
like what it, it, would there be a narrative of any kind is yes. there like a story arc okay because like to me destiny doesn't have much of a story like it's just like go do missions so how would you weave that in where you you do have a multiplayer component you do have a bounty component but also there's there's an overarching overarching narrative so destiny uh has gotten the story in recent years we just kind of dropped out playing it um and unfortunately they do it in a seasonal capacity and then remove content after it's too old so if you're behind you can't play it and that's that kicked me out of the the whole destiny thing because i, I like going back and restarting a character and going through the story and so i stopped playing it but i went online and started reading and seeing they put this huge story together that goes in seasons as long as you're keeping up with it and it's actually quite good um for mandalorian i would have it so each person i mean it depends on how ambitious we're getting here but if for each person they could go through a single player story so you'd assume everybody around you is doing the same thing if you want to get really ambitious you could have multiple stories and choose which one you want um but i wouldn't have the multiplayer component and and interaction in the world uh via a brick wall to a, a good campaign because i really like stuff like mass effect i really like yeah being able to go through and have the, dialogue and all that stuff where this has been time... oh i was gonna say this has been the i think the eternal struggle for video games is that you you have to pick do you want a really good single player narrative or do you want really good multiplayer components yeah. bungie said they were going to solve that with destiny i have yet to see it solved it feels even in their best story moments that I experienced. I know you're saying now they have good story moments, but everything I experienced, it was nothing compared to the best story moments of like an Uncharted or even or even um, uh, Jedi uh, Fallen Survivor, Fallen Order. Or Fallen Order. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's tough. I I'm not a game developer, um, but you know, in a perfect world, I would like to see something that's strong single player, but the ability to branch out and go do side quests as long as you want you know without it really being a problem for the, st the story but i i don't know the first thing about how to balance that would between rebels and the purge be a good uh time period for a mandalorian game i'm between two different time periods for mandalorian game um because depending on the time period mandalorians and and their power struggle and where they're at is very different um i'm kind of sick to death of the current era in either Skywalker or between six and seven, um, or the Mandalorian show, for instance, uh, them not having a home of Mandalore is interesting, and it strengthens their bond as brothers and a and sort of a covenant or a creed or whatever they got, and they're living in caves together. I like that aspect. However, I'm a little bored of that um, that I'm era. Done, so too. I would probably go way back when Mandalorians uh, occasionally t teamed up with Sith to kill jedi i mm. think i think they continue up with sith i know they killed jedi but i i i'm i'm a little rusty on my on my old republic um so this republic. would be like between episode two and three it would be before one oh, yeah okay. it would be a long time ago and means... is still a place and it, it think about this Josh. we're not talking about the purge during the clone wars we're talking way back you you can't have any c3po cameos if you do if you go back that that's far. true that's true should be worth noting that at uh, time of recording, um, we are during the release of um, season three of Mandalorian. Uh, right. So it's, it's about halfway finished. All right. So a couple things. I love I love the period of and, and, and movies around World War II. Uh, I think it's very interesting. The ridiculously overwhelming fear of Germany just plowing through Europe and the the courage it took to to stand up and, and fight and the just for that time period the in crazy technological innovations that were that were being driven to um to fight in in ways we just have never existed on the planet before it was a we very should, interesting time they should make a video game about world war ii oh my god <laughs> so <laughs> so no uh they have killed the whole like fighting in the infantry sort of game not interested in that however i think being a spy or saboteur in nazi controlled germany would be really really interesting where mm. you're you are sort of behind enemy lines you're a german you know german citizen 
and you have to go on missions to sabotage or gather intel for the um, the allies. I I imagine this being very akin to Dishonored, if you've ever played those games, or Hitman, where you have like sandbox missions, like you you travel to an area, and then you have a sandbox mission. So it's not open world, but it's like this mission is is um, is open for the for the period that you're in it. And you can choose to approach it however you want. You could um, knock knock someone out and take their um, uniform, and so you can blend in. Um, you could set trip mines. You could blow things up to create distractions. All all those sorts of things. I think that would be so much fun. Um, I would to to explore in the in this world. I also think I'd want to keep it relatively grounded. Um, not not going too ridiculous with any of the technology, maybe like a couple of edge technology things and like, like radio transmitters for something, you know, communicating information or something like that, but relatively grounded, um, but have, you know, different, different gadgets that would be somewhat applicable to the time, even if it is sort of slightly sci-fi um, akin to like 007. Um, so sort of combine Dishonored maybe with Hitman. Yeah. And then set it in, in World War II. I think the what my what's, favorite. What's Dishonored like? They're it's made by Arcane Studios, which are known for um, sandbox games, um, where they just give you a ton of tools, and you can use them in ridiculously complex ways. They're they're all about just giving the player a ton of tools, not telling them how to do it. You want to go all stealth? You can you can stealth the whole game without ever killing anyone. They allow for that. Get an achievement. For um, yes. And so there's just I lo I love that sort of creativity in the mission where you you get to choose. It's like, hey, go go solve this. We're not going to tell you how to get there, or what to do, or how to use it, or how to use the right stuff. We're not going to handhold you. You have to figure it all out. And I, I love that sort of stuff. So I think that'd be really fun. the The other specific mission that I think would be really fun with this is my my favorite uh, war movie of all time is called Where Eagles Dare. And basically, they these um, British troopers get dropped in the middle of Nazi Germany in the winter in the mountains. And so it's, you know, very, very snowy, snows everywhere. And they have to infiltrate a castle using a cable car. Um, and so they, they sneak up into the castle through the cable car. Um, they have to create a bunch of distractions. They have to exfiltrate someone. Uh, and I think that'd be such a fun mission in a video game where you have, you have like the ground base that you have to, work with to figure out how to get off the cable car and get access to it. And then you take the cable car up and then you get, you have to explore the castle to find the documents or whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, and then get out without being caught. I would, I would play, I would play that a lot. I would enjoy that so much. That reminded me of Valkyrie for a little bit. The, um, Tom Cruise. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's definitely got some Valkyrie yeah, vibes to that it. On there, yeah. That sounds pretty good. I'm, that sounds pretty doable too. I feel like. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'm is. actually I'm actually surprised there's nothing. Mine there like is mine. one. Like there is one called the Saboteur, uh, which is pretty close. And it, it takes pl It's an older game, so you don't get a lot of the sandbox mechanics. And it takes place in Paris rather than Nazi Germany. To modernize that with you know, modern game engine physics and graphics yeah. and all that, and yeah. What's really funny is that. Trevor and I were thinking of very similar games. And I don't even play video games. What's the difference <laughs> with yours exactly? So when you said espionage games, and I was like, wait, how did we come up with like the same game? The only difference is that I have a different era. Um, mm. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a video game that takes place during the Cold War. Uh, and I am fascinated by the spycraft of the Cold War. Um, I am very into... I did a deep dive on uh, Cold War spycraft after I watched one of my favorite television shows, which was called The Americans. Oh, yeah. That's a great show. About um, a family that has been sleeper agents in the United States for 20 years. Um, that's their Russian spies. So, but I then read some Jean Le Carre novels uh, afterwards, which are 
Um, if you, you've probably heard of um, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy or The Night Manager or The Constant Gardener, that's John Le Carre. Uh, and he wrote tons of spy novels that took place. Basically, think of James Bond and literally the opposite is George Smiley. Um, so if James Bond is this suave, debonair, uh, spy who's you know who who all the late ladies want to be with like George Smiley is like mild mannered Gary Oldman who's kind of got a gut going and has high blood pressure and is very soft spoken and you would never think that he's the most dangerous man in England. Um, so almost almost slow horses. Yes, basically. Um, so <laughs> the but what what. Jean Le Carré goes into is a lot of the just moral ambiguity that needs to happen in order to make spycraft work. Um, the closest I've ever seen is um, on the subject of Star Wars Andor, where basically in order to be a good spy, you just have to just empty yourself of uh, empty yourself of all morality. Um, what I would be interested in would be an espionage type game. Um, it would probably need to be somewhat action oriented, but I would want the action to take the action to support uh, the moral ambiguity um, more akin to the last of us where you're, you're thinking about plot and characters and you're thinking about that, you know, there's action, but it's not like the, I, wouldn't want it to be, you know, chain gunning a bunch of goons um, so much as it would be um, missions. Uh, the other thing is I think it would be interesting in the vein of the choose your own adventure kind of games um, where you some, I, I completely telling tales out of school because I don't play these games, but from what I understand, like Mass Effect, uh, that you can kind of choose how you play the game. Yeah. Um, or uh, some of the ones where you can choose to be a he like a hero or a villain. Or I would love to do basically set it in like 1960 Berlin, and mm. you can be allied with the West, or you could be allied with the USSR. So you could be on either team. Um, you could be male or female. Uh, and campaigns, if you want different campaigns, you could. You could switch sides. You could change the way that you move around. You could be a double agent. You could get in relationships, These that kind of thing. And I would really want to hang out in the moral gray area, do things like, you know, okay, well, if you talk to this person, well, then that person dies and really yeah, get into that kind of stuff. So it would be similar. I think Trevor's would be a little bit more action oriented and a little bit more mission oriented. Mine would be a little bit more. You get to to be your own spy, Vision and oriented. yeah. And Your, so yours feels more like narrative choice, where mine feels more like execution choice. Yes, yeah. So that's uh, I don't know it, because I'm not. I don't play many video games. Uh, I don't even know if this is something that people would be into. But I know that the time period has not been touched by video games very much, and I know that the. Uh, you know, everybody loves World War II, but there's just not a whole lot of, of Cold War stuff. The other thing that I would like to work in is an element of historical fiction. Um, I would love for John F. Kennedy to be, to be in this. I would love for J. Edgar Hoover to be in this. You know, I, I would love for Nikita Khrushchev to be in this and do historical fiction that, that real historical figures could kind of cameo um, in a fictional plot line. Reagan was in uh, Call of Duty... Uh, Cold War, for instance. Oh, okay. It's a small part of it, but yeah, that kind of thing. Dude, I I think you're onto something there, though. I'd have a love-hate relationship with that game because um, I'm a completionist when it comes to this stuff. So I'm currently at a part in um, uh, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, where I have to make a choice between saving one person or like stopping a terrorist or something. And you can't do both. So like, if I choose one, this person's going to die. If I do that one, these people are going to die. And I, I, I want to do everything perfectly. <laughs> So your game sounds like a nightmare for me, but I would probably just play it twice or or several times just to Josh. 
but just just wait until you play this game called life when you can't make the right decision all the time. <laughs> I don't have a save file I can go back to. But yeah, that sounds really good. I like that. I would play that. And you're so there are a series Call of Duty has a little sect of games called Call of Duty Black Ops. Um and those take place during that time period, but they're all just like hoaxy over up. the top. Yeah. 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 Call of Duty is mainly about finding excuses to shoot people. Um, and this would yes. be more more narrative driven and and the, the uh and more choices driven, um, rather than you know, finding excuses to 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 chain gun a bunch of goons. It's uh, basically closest... fable in the Cold War. No, oh, it, it's it's like not it's like baby Cartoonish morality. Yeah. Aren't, yeah. aren't the Elder Scrolls games a little bit like that though, where you can you can kind of choose your affiliation and whatnot? You can. You can be part of like a, a dark brotherhood who assass- assassinates people, or you could be part of the Mages Guild. But the thing it is, doesn't... no matter what you do, it doesn't affect the world. Mm. Yeah. You aren't seen as a villain I, or whatever. I, Fable's the kind of thing where it's like, do you want to save the orphans or burn down the orphanage? You're like, <laughs> it's it's not really a choice. But... I honestly, the the closest game as always the sounds to what you're describing is Cyberpunk 2077, mm. where like you have meaningful choices that impact the world, um, in a way. That's true. So if they could just adapt that to be like 1960s Berlin, I actually think it would work out pretty well. Dan, have you ever did you ever watch uh, a little drummer girl? No, what is that? I think that's where um what what's her name? Uh the new Black Widow, that actress, like she got kind of big from Florence Pugh? Florence Pugh, yeah. Or I well, I guess that movie, that horror movie. But it's uh it's a show directed by Chanwick Park. I uh, oh. I liked it more than it's but so- it's it's based on John Lacar. Oh, I oh yeah, I, you you had me at Florence Pugh, but Florence Pugh plus John okay. Carre, I'm in. Yeah, it's good. And uh, Michael Shannon. Uh, how? Where has this been all my life? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should have seen this by now. Um, okay, my video game. Um, well, Josh, you mentioned before, like you had a dream about this a long time ago, around when um Twi- Twilight Princess was coming out. I had a dream that like. I think it was long enough ago that like only kind of like art from the game had, had come up and I had a dream that a Mario game with like that kind of like darker fantasy vibe would be there. Uh, like your background. Yeah, that's wait, literally wait, wait, this was literally it. me using AI to see a dream that I had. Wait, so you created this with uh, Mid Journey? Yeah, version five. The hands are getting better, except he's got oh hand- fingers. Okay. It's five I, fingers and a thumb. I, I hadn't even noticed, but um, getting close. Yeah, hands hands are way better in version five, but uh, I think it would aesthetically it would be kind of like a darker fantasy, uh, you know, not like a Dark Souls, more like what um, you know, more akin to Twilight Princess, and I think the play would be most like Breath of the Wild where it but like even more platforming and you'd get like i don't know every power mario's ever had so you'd get like fire spells and like you'd be able to throw your hat and possess monsters and stuff um have you seen the but alice also games? like what alice games like alice in wonderland have you seen those games those yeah like dark twist on them what about that would that be kind of what you go for aesthetically similar to that yeah for sure because okay. like some of the like the like queen's guards are like weird zombie yeah. less less of a hack and slash but like more of a hack and slash element than uh you know mario games usually yeah. do also with like kind of kind of a plot a la uh mario rpg but yeah i was just I gonna mean, say this sounds a little bit like super mario rpg but like but like for the 21st century yeah Pretty much. I mean, and less of like way less of like an RPG element, if any, like, I don't think there'd be any like level progression as much as like, you know, uh, that wouldn't seem right. Like it's more like you would go to a certain place and like to get a certain power up or something. And the power ups, you know, it would be like items essentially that you could use in other places. And, you know, you, you would base that on like, the amount of items. I don't know how you'd balance that necessarily. Uh, 
But I, I feel like Nintendo could do that the best as far as like mixing kind of like that uh like sword action. Like he'd you know, like in this, he has a hammer, you know, it you're you don't have a sword or anything, but like the Mario games are really good at um having you feel good about moving around and like um they're probably the best platformers even still as far as like whenever something bad happens you're always like that was my fault um if it actually really good controls feedback. and what you're yeah yeah it, it all yeah. feels like it's fair like it's not you know i pressed the button and didn't do what you wanted to do unless you're playing super mario 2 and you're controlling luigi Oh, and yeah. his feet have a mind of their own, and yeah. you, you just want to chuck the controller at the screen. But yeah. that's, but you know, that game was what was it, Miku Miku Land, or I forget what it's called. It wasn't uh, originally a Mario game. Was it Doki Doki Madness? I think. So. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, mine is the least well thought out, I'd say, it's and very unique. Guaranteed not to ever happen. Hey, never say never. Doki Doki Panic. Doki Doki Panic. Yeah, there you go. Well, if you could trying to think like what other ips you could mix with because if like if you mix like mario and luigi's mansion you could get like a darker tone i'm um, trying to think what else could you could mix it with to get a, a slightly darker tone to to the game i mean in in reality i feel like uh di- or nintendo like could make a game like what i'm thinking but it would i mean what would probably work best is just making it in a an original ip right which they still do, and it's still, you know, they can keep making new games that, like, have a certain, fill a certain niche, or, like, a new niche, and they do it really well. But it's actually weird, this is a tangent, but it's so weird to think about, like, Nintendo has a deck of cards, and they just want to play those cards for all eternity. Like, when, What was the last, like, truly new IP that Nintendo proper produced? No, I mean they have like Arms, uh, Splatoon, Xenoblade. Arms. I don't know anything about. Not Splatoon, great. Xenoblade, Splatoon but... has been good. Splatoon I... was a good. That's a good example. I keep seeing new characters pop up in Super Smash Brothers, but because they add <laughs> more, because they they license characters now, I can never tell. Right. Like I was like, oh, so yeah. is like is is Bayonetta a thing? Like yes, right. they didn't yes. make that character though. I don't know if Nintendo owns that character now. Half the roster is uh, Fire Emblem characters at this point. Yeah, that's I <laughs> that, that too. I've never gotten into those. I, the only other know. gimmick so, I think of that has the vibe of what you're maybe what you're going for is uh, near Automata. Near Automata. You guys ever heard that? Maybe one? I don't know what the gameplay of the game it's, is. It's, I've seen it, the the Earth has been um, uh, evacuated, and you are one of many. Um, androids that are uh, i think are based on the moon and you have to go down to earth and like it's take out games? robots okay. that took over everything but it has it's it's like a it's a jrpg kind of thing yeah a lot of it okay but it's so also maybe that's that's also a thing. uh bayonetta devil may cry kind of combat well this so, would be way different because this would be like a lot more grounded like a souls game as far as like the combat's like very small and like right. every enemy would be a lot more like you know a struggle you're not just like hacking through a horde of you know yeah yeah goombas or whatever fun fact or fun question lightning round what's your favorite like mario enemy the 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 thing that takes the what is his name ike or something and he takes the ball out of his mouth he like looks up and like a giant spike ball comes out oh yeah i like that guys are nuts uh i am quite a fan of the blargs that uh that are when you're on the lava, the the these like dragon monster things just jump out of the lava to eat you. But and you if you time it perfectly in Super Mario World when you have Yoshi, you can eat him. And so but oh, it, yeah. like there you don't eat like the entire sprite doesn't exist, so it's just like the head and Yoshi eats it. <laughs> well, thank Sounds you good. everyone for joining us. At, uh, leave a comment below or message us at uh, the Josh Dixon Show at gmail.com with any questions for us or topic suggestions for next time. Until then, see you later. <laughs>